Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Monday, April 20th, 2020. Uh, we're going to look at some things going on with the upcoming hurricane season. Uh, a little bit of a look at the lower 48 weather situation. Fortunately, over the next several days, severe weather looks like it's going to calm down a little bit more than what we have seen today. If you've been paying attention to weather Twitter, you have no doubt seen the incredible footage of the tornado in Florida uh, across I-75. We've had a very busy couple of days of severe weather. We even had hail here at uh, my homestead in Wilmington, North Carolina. That was yesterday. The kids were kind of excited about that. We had marble-sized hail, or I think more accurately, dime size, because there can be lots of different size marbles, right? Um, but anyway, let's take a look at what's happening in the world <clears throat> of the tropics. All right, what is this? This is the anomaly map from three years ago, exactly three years ago, April 20th, 2017. See it right there. And I want you to pay attention to this very carefully because I'm going to show you what it looks like exactly three years later. And the main area that I want you to pay attention to is this right here, off the coast of Africa, across the Caribbean, through what we call the main development region. So here it is three years ago, here it is today. Yep, it is time to be concerned, uh, not just in the United States, but the Caribbean, you know, the islands of the Caribbean, uh, the Lesser Antilles, all the way through the Greater Antilles, Central America over here, Mexico, and up into mainland U.S. We need to watch this very closely because of the potential here, the potential of a very, very busy hurricane season coming. Again, looking back three years ago, and why do I reference 2017? Well, we all remember how busy 2017 was. It brought us Harvey, it brought us Irma, it brought us Maria. There was also Jose in there, which, you know, that could have been, had it gone a different direction, a very, very bad situation. Uh, 2017 is a, you know, not that far off, all right? 2018, also quite busy, gave us Category 5 Michael. Last year, of course, 2019, we had Category 5 Dorian. Um, and this sea surface temperature profile, I'm at the point now where it is alarming. And we need to be able to recognize this and say, all right, you know, again, I, I go to the health thing. It's like your doctor says, dude, your blood pressure is getting on up there. It's a little bit alarming now. I need you to do something about it or bad things are going to happen. And so that's what we're going to focus on going forward. We're seeing this set up. We're seeing these signs. All right, it looks like a rough hurricane season ahead. It's not a guarantee, but these are very solid uh, indications, and we need to do something about it. So we're going to focus on that more and more in the coming weeks. How do we prepare in this new world that we have been presented, where we are on a lockdown, so to speak? That's a little bit of an, I think, of an overstatement, at least in most countries. Not necessarily locked down, but it's different, and it is, and we have to acknowledge that and how that is going to collide with the world of dealing with hurricanes. So here we are, quite warm in the Atlantic, through the main development region, Caribbean and Gulf. Uh, this has warmed up a little bit over the last week, kind of a resurgence. I'm going to show you why that this is only temporary, and we'll do that now, in fact. Come on. Aw, oh, it's going to screw me over. I knew it was going to do that. Let's see if it'll... Oh, good, it didn't. Yay! I digress. Um, this is the subsurface temperature uh, anomalies. Again, that word subsurface. If this is the surface, we can all agree to that, right? This is the subsurface. So this is a strip in the vertical of this area. Kind of like if you took uh, a slice right out through here and looked in the vertical way down about 400 meters deep, this is what you would see. So at the uh, surface to about 100 meters deep, uh, an area of upper ocean heat content and warmth that is speckled with some pretty solid positive anomalies, warmer than average. Uh, but these are being completely eroded away here uh, by a large area of cold anomalies that is going to be what we call upwelling, rising to the surface, eroding all of this away, and we're going to be left with cold neutral, cool neutral to maybe La Nina conditions, Again, I think I talked about this recently. I do not care whether or not we see a La Nina 
That does not matter to me. It's the absence of El Nino. Getting that out of the way is a very, very big indicator of the hurricane season ahead. There is not going to be an El Nino this year. I am 100% certain of it uh, for the hurricane season. August, September, October will not see an El Nino, and you can quote me on that. Uh, I am certain. And so not having an El Nino is the big puzzle piece here. Then it goes from there. If we have cool neutral to La Nina, that just affects things differently, makes things maybe more favorable. But if you have a strong shock to the system, as in a very cold signature in the Pacific, that tends to change things around even more and we get very complicated. So let's don't worry about that. The absence of El Nino, and that is what this is indicating, definitely is what I am most concerned with. So we're going to watch and see that this area through here is going to begin to cool. Uh, and the Atlantic is obviously warmer than average. That means more energy, more humidity, more moisture, less shear, uh, etc. We are setting up for a potentially very busy hurricane season ahead. How are the actual sea surface temperatures? Well, most beaches are generally closed, um, which I'm not going to get into the, you know, whatever. That's a local community, de community decisions. But they are, they're closed, and we have to deal with that. So if they were open, well, here's where the 80 degree Fahrenheit or 26 Celsius line is. Why is this important? Why am I outlining this in blue? Well, 26 Celsius, which is about, we just round it up and call it 80 Fahrenheit, or higher, is the minimum threshold needed for most tropical cyclone activity. I say most. There are instances where you can have hurricanes develop over colder sea surface temperatures, but that's because of different things going on in the atmosphere, which we're not going to get into today. But the bottom line, all of this area right through here is now plenty warm for hurricanes to develop. So why don't we have any hurricanes? Well, there's other things that go on, upper level wind shear, disturbances that come along to act as a, um, a seedling. Those are not there yet. But we're getting there. I think within a month, only a month, we're going to have to start looking out for the possibility of development somewhere in this area because that's naturally where we would look. It doesn't matter the anomalies and, oh, it's 2020, so psh, why not? No, this is where you would normally look after about mid-May and into June. This is the typical breeding ground, that and the southwest Atlantic. But anyway, water temperatures are warming, as you would expect. And yes, the Gulf of Mexico still running above the long-term average in most locations. Uh, it's almost locked and loaded, so now we got to figure out, all right, what do we do about it? So just a couple more little points to ponder here. This is from Phil Klotzbach about a week ago, I think, that several agencies are forecasting. This is his way of portraying this, uh, an above-average season. Um, and he talks about it over here, seven groups. You can add a couple more to that since his tweet. Uh, that, of course, includes Colorado State University, 268 Weather, Weather Tiger, companies I've never heard of before. Um, you know, you got Weather Bell right there, uh, University of Arizona, um, and uh, NC State just added theirs, and the Weather Company, IBM Weather Company, whatever, I, uh, Michael Ventress, his group. And all of these agencies are looking at an above-normal hurricane season to possibly even hyperactive, possibly. But you know what? We'll deal with that as we have to. For now, the look suggests a strong hurricane season ahead, a busy one. And today, Phil Klotzbach tweeting that right here in the midst of hurricane season, that most of the models indicating at the peak of the season, generally a cooling trend in the Enso area, the absence of El Nino. Some of these models are just stubborn, I guess, but whatever. <laughs> you look out there and you, that subsurface data really tells the story if it'll come back. In my opinion, that's a lot of subsurface cold that's just waiting to get up to the surface. And with the atmosphere changing, the lack of strong westerly winds over here to drive more warm water, it's only a matter of time. All right? And so I want to motivate you to, you know, Buy a little extra water here and there. Don't go hoarding stuff. That's not nice. But call your insurance company, you know, call them up. Say, hey, Allstate, hey, State Farm, whoever. 
What's the deal with my insurance? Do you rent? Maybe you should get renter's insurance to cover hurricane season. It's actually pretty economical. How does my flood insurance work? Stuff like that. Get your generator checked now. Yes, you might have to go visit somebody, but you can do that. You can visit people to get repairs done. Just keep away. You don't have to go up and give them a big old bro hug, right? A big bear hug. You know the bro hug that bros do, right? The men, no, you don't got to do, and women. I'm, look, seriously, we, we don't have to lose our minds about all of this and avoid each other like we're the walking dead. And if you get close to somebody, they're going to eat you. But we can be sensible, get things done, make sure your car, your automobile, as best as you can afford it. I get it. Everybody's hurting. But make sure you're able to handle this hurricane season as well as you can. Again, we're going to talk about this in much more detail sporadically on these updates, but also in the Hurricane U series, and I'll talk about that before uh, we cash out our chips here today. All right. Uh, another indication that we do need to really start paying attention to this, Ben Knoll, we had him on Hurricane U last week. Um, the increasing intraseasonal forcing over the Atlantic. What does that mean? Well, basically when we look at this map, the green is positive for development, the, what do you call that, brown to red or whatever. Uh, it, whoops, I screwed up. This is negative for development, this is positive for development. Uh, this is as well. So probably get an active East Pacific, uh, why not? You know, it usually is. Even when the Atlantic's gonna be busy, you still get a lot of activity in the Eastern Pacific. The point is, this portion of the Western Hemisphere appears to be favored. Oh, and it means, you know, right there it says, meaning building evidence for early season Atlantic tropical activity. So late May into early June, do not be surprised if we get development somewhere in this area in the Atlantic and certainly over here in the Eastern Pacific. So that means you folks in Mexico. I got a lot of people that watch on the Pacific side of Mexico. And of course the Gulf and Caribbean side of Central America. You know, we all need to watch out for this together because all these hurricanes that could form, maybe they all stay out to sea, but if they don't, we got to be ready. All right. So just don't freak out about it, please. But do say, yep, I'm convinced hurricane season is possibly going to be bad. I better do something to be ready. And again, we'll talk about what you can do later. All right. At least in somewhat good news here. Um, the severe weather threat starting to calm down over the next several days. This is the day two outlook, and, or the day one. This is day two tomorrow. Yeah, you know, not the best place to have nasty weather where some of the worst uh, concentrations of the, uh, the coronavirus infections are happening, apparently, but what can you do? Um, so pay attention. Hey, at least everybody's indoors and, and, and on their smartphone or tablet. You, you know, you, you, you figure they'll get the warnings, right? Hopefully trying to be at least somewhat positive here. So slight risk of severe weather tomorrow uh, up in the uh, Northeast corridor and then a slight risk here in the heart of Tornado Alley. Uh, wish I could just teleport out there. You know, the weather can be beautiful if it doesn't roll a tornado across I-75 or through Tuscaloosa, Alabama or whatever, right? You just, unfortunately you can't pick and choose the weather. All right, so um, this Wednesday on Hurricane U, I will be joined by weathermodels.com, uh, their very own Jack, I assume his name is Sillen, I'll ask him, uh, we'll, we'll let him introduce himself. Uh, he is, who is that by the way, let's see if it lets me mouse over it, I love Twitter, that's awesome. So this guy blogs, he writes some incredible blogs on uh, the weather.us site, uh, weathermodels.us, um, and he's, you know, Cornell Weather, I mean, come on Cornell, that's pretty that's pretty, that's awesome. Uh, and um, this guy knows his stuff, okay? And we're going to delve into the world of computer models uh, specifically. And I think you're really going to find this fascinating. Last week when we talked to Ben Knoll, we were more on a coarse scale, larger scale modeling, right? The dog's barking. Um, don't know if you could hear that. Shut up, dog. Um MJO, counter, uh, convectively coupled Kelvin waves, whatever. Larger scale features that we can look at in, in computer modeling. We do model that. Jack will help us understand spaghetti plots, you know, ensemble forecast. What does 
the GFDL mean? You know, stuff like that. So he's going to be my special guest on this uh, Wednesday's edition of Hurricane U on YouTube, live for all, supported by our patrons on Patreon, uh, which makes it available to everybody. No commercials, no nothing. It's great. So join me this Wednesday on Hurricane U. I'll post the link, of course. And it is all supported by Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> I wish. Some of you come from Twitter. Man, you can tell my brain is just going a mile a second today. Lots of stuff that I'm working on. I changed my background image for my Patreon landing page. This is a shot from our um, weather balloon test last year over Kansas. I just thought that was freaking gorgeous. Uh, and it's very peaceful. So there's my background photo on Patreon from a dollar. What do you get for just a dollar? Well, you get access to our podcast series, Stories from the Hurricane Highway, my entire library of all the Tracking the Hurricanes documentaries. Like I say, it's kind of like Netflix, except I have, whatever, a handful of um, programs instead of 8 million. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. But really, the podcast is on there. The Tracking the Hurricane series is on there. Uh, my new television style series, The Hurricane Highway, the first three episodes, that's on there. Um, any blog post that I do, most everything I do, I do it on Patreon first, and then I put it out on the public realm from there, and it goes up from there. $10 a month to support what we're doing. You get access to pretty much everything, all of the cameras, uh, the chat, you know, and everything else. And then it goes from there, $25 a month. I'll send you one of our new tracking maps, uh, which is awesome. 20 by 18 tracking map or 24 by 18 full color. You get your name in the credits of our series and so forth. Um, so anyway, that's what Patreon is all about. And they are the ones that make Hurricane U free. So thank you, patrons, for allowing all of us to benefit from that. Ben Knoll last week was fantastic. And Jack is going to be equally and maybe even more fantastic this coming week or this Wednesday. It is this week already. All right, so uh, that is it for me for today. Um, you know, we're less than 45 days away from the hurricane season starting. One of the episodes of Hurricane U will be focused entirely on hurricane preparedness. And I know that's not going to be a glamorous, exciting, you know, computer models based, you know, addition like t uh, Wednesday, but it's important, okay? Even the dog thinks so. Uh, we will talk preparedness, and we're going to talk about it in a way that will incorporate. We're not going to ignore what's going on outside of these walls here. We are dealing with uh, a historic situation and how that's going to, again, collide. And it will. It's going to collide with uh, the hurricane world. We need to deal with that. And so I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to invite a guest on that can help us reconcile what we're dealing with here and prepare you in a way that is not um, just totally alarmist, you know, that yes, you need to be alarmed about it, like an alarm going off, it wakes you up to something, but I don't want you to be consumed with fear. We're not going to do that. We're going to give you the tools, at least the mental capacity, to arm yourself to be ready for what comes this hurricane season, and we're going to get through it one way or the other. That's going to be my goal. All right? All right. Thanks for tuning in as always. I do appreciate it. If you're new to my YouTube channel, Subscribe, enable notifications, all that good stuff so that you are notified when I post a video. And um, I'll keep doing what I'm doing here, and you guys keep staying safe and healthy where you are. I appreciate you tuning in from whatever device you happen to be doing it from. It's great to have you there. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll see you Wednesday on Hurricane U, and then next Monday as we continue with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion.